Hi gang, the Primarchs of Warhammer 40k are an interesting bunch. Lion, L. Johnson, Horus, Lupercal, and um, Angry Angron the Angry Marine couldn't be more different. But what's the inspiration behind them? Where did those names come from? And what are the mysterious origins of Raven Raven, the Raven guy? So if you didn't know, 40k, especially old 40k, is littered with easter eggs, references often jokingly to real world history, events or ancient mythology. The original writers were students of history and especially art history, and those influences are everywhere in the 40k background, from obvious historical analogues to Shakespeare references. And in this, the Primarchs are no different. The names of the 18 Primarchs who led the Space Marine Legions were invented over a number of years. Some were even given their names before Primarchs were part of the background, originally being generals or Imperial commanders. And many of those names are actually references to something else. Sometimes these references fit with their Legion's backstory, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes the Primarch was given the name before the background for their Legion was written, and sometimes the Legion's background comes from the Primarch's name, so it's a mixed bunch. So let's go through all 18 and let's start at the start with one of the more well-known stories, that of the first Primarch, Lionel Johnson of the Dark Angels. Lion L. Johnson's position as Commander of the Dark Angels goes all the way back to Rogue Trader, where he has a few alternate spellings, like in this box out, where he's Lin L. Gonson, founder of the Dark Angels. But the name we know him by actually makes his origin much more obvious. Lionel Johnson was an English poet from the late 19th century. His poetry was considered very traditionalist and austere, and he was a devout Catholic convert, but he was also a gay man, something that would have been scandalous and very illegal at the time. As such, his work often concerned his own deep shame of the sin he felt he'd committed and needed to hide from the rest of the world. His most famous poem, and one on exactly that theme, is called The Dark Angel. Dark angel with thine aching lust to rid the world of penitence, malicious angel who still dust my soul such subtle violence. That's the first verse, but the poem carries on for much longer. I'll put a link below. But the connection to an intensely moralistic and monastic chapter who conceal a dark and shameful secret is pretty obvious. In 40k, the dark angels are obsessed with concealing knowledge of the fallen, a faction of their legion that sided with Horus in the heresy and which the chapter is spent the last 10,000 years trying to hunt down, lest anyone find out the truth. What's interesting here is that every Loyalist Legion had some elements who sided with Horus. So the thing the Dark Angels flagellate themselves about isn't uniquely that shameful, especially not from the position of 10,000 years later. It's their own beliefs that cause them to be so ashamed of ever having sinned, which actually makes them a really good analogy for Lionel Johnson. Anyway, how much of that was actually intended in the Rogue Trader days is questionable, but it's one of the few where Games Workshop attempted to change the name later to try and make the reference a bit less obvious. Apparently on the Primarch's home world of Caliban, another reference, Lionel Johnson means the Lion of the Forest, which suggests that over thousands of years of isolation, Lion still means Lion, but forests are called Johnsons? Okay, there's no second Primarch, so moving on, we have the third Primarch, Fulgrim, but unfortunately, he doesn't get as much of a story. In World, he's meant to be named after a mythological water deity from his home world of Chemos, but that isn't a reference to anything in real life. The best I've seen is that it's a play on words from the Latin fulgur, meaning lightning or flash, which I guess makes sense. He is quite flashy. Fulgrim is also called the Phoenician, which is an Easter egg, but not the one you think. In his backstory, he does preside over an artistic renaissance on Chemos, which I guess you could see as like a phoenix rising from the flames, but that's not actually it. The Phoenicians were an ancient civilization that existed around the Levant in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BCE. They were called that by the nearby ancient Greeks who traded with them, and one of their most valuable exports was a very specific dye that couldn't be found anywhere else purple dye. So Fulgrim the Phoenician is actually a reference to the colour his legion's armour is. He's Fulgrim from those purple guys. Onwards we've got the fourth Primarch, Perturabo of the Iron Warriors. Now the obvious thing here is to go, Perturabo sounds like 
perturbed. Maybe he's hesitant and a bit annoyed about it, but it's a bit cleverer than that. The Iron Warriors are of course famed for their attrition tactics, able to withstand huge losses and just keep going. Per Durabo was the motto of the British occultist Alistair Crowley, and roughly translated in Latin means I will endure, which absolutely makes sense. Crowley himself was active in the early 20th century and, after studying various occult beliefs, developed his own religion, Thelema, which evolved over his life. His work was then a huge influence on many of the New Age and new religious movements that came later during the middle part of the 20th century. On the face of it, his study of magic and the occult and his obvious charisma as a sort of cult leader might have made the name a better fit for a different Primarch, but then multiple biographers of Crowley have described him as being self-confident, brash, egotistic, highly intelligent, arrogant and cruel, capable of immense physical and emotional cruelty, and showing a blind arrogance, petty fits of bile, and contempt for the abilities of his fellow men, which, yeah, th that's that's the guy. That fits. Okay, fifth Primarch, Jagatai Khan of the White Scars, an obvious one I think. So the Scars are an analogue to the medieval Mongols and to some degree the much earlier Huns, both civilizations of horse nomads from Central Asia, famous for descending on the rest of the world as a horde of skilled cavalry fighters, which is also exactly what the White Scars are. The most famous leader of the Mongols was Genghis Khan. Both the titles Khan and Khagan are real world titles that are then used by the White Scars in the fiction. Genghis Khan's second son and successor was Jagatai Khan. And he was known as quite a just and lawful ruler, particularly compared to his father. And that's also how Jagatai Khan is seen in 40k. He's the leader of this horde of bikers, but he's also one of the more relatable and honourable of the Primarchs. Right, Liman Russ of the Space Wolves is next. Russ is one of the early ones. Both Russ and the Wolves went through a few changes in the early fluff before they settled on this whole Norse werewolf thing they have. Originally, Russ was just a human Imperial commander and the Space Wolves were just a regular example marine chapter. No longboats or ancient sagas in sight. So I would guess that the whole Viking thing actually stems from the authors working with the name they already had. The Rus were an ethnic group in early medieval Europe, prominent from the 9th to 11th century. They ruled over a state now known as Kievan Rus, which at its height covered a large part of Eastern Europe and would eventually lend its name to Russia, but they were actually descended from the Varangians, or Eastern Vikings, originally Norsemen from Sweden who'd settled along the Volga River, and that's the thread that leads them back to this guy and the whole Norse Viking theme. Interestingly, Space Wolf Terminator squads in 30k are called Varangir, probably a reference to the Varangian Guard, Rus mercenaries that served in the armies of Byzantium to the south. So the seventh Primarch, Rogal Dawn, has a little less to him. He appears for the first time in Realms of Chaos during the story of the Emperor battling Horus, but there's not much else there. The best I could really find looking around wikis and things was that Dawn means stronghold in Old English and fist in Irish, so that kind of fits. There's also this idea that Rogal sounds a bit like Regal, but that's a bit of a stretch to me. But after Rogaldorn, we get to the other really famous story, the Night Haunter Conrad Kurz of the Night Lords. So despite everyone thinking this is a Batman reference, it isn't, or at least it wasn't the original intention. Joseph Conrad was a Polish-British novelist writing in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, just like the other two I mentioned, so maybe that era was someone's specific field of interest. His most famous novella is called Heart of Darkness, which tells the story of a mining company operative sent on a mission to the jungles of the Congo to track down another operative that's gone missing called Kurtz. When he finds him, Kurtz has gone mad and it turns out he's been brutally ruling over the local people who sort of worship him as a saviour. It was adapted into the 1979 film Apocalypse Now, which moved the action to the Vietnam War and the plot to a search for a rogue US Army colonel called Kurtz. Joseph Conrad, Colonel Kurtz, and we have Conrad Kurz, a Primarch driven mad by visions and whose brutal idea of justice on his adoptive homeworld see him regarded as a feared saviour. And to really cement that, there's a few other references here. That planet is called Nostromo, after another Joseph Conrad book, Nostromo, which also gave its name to the spaceship in the film Alien. And one of my favourite ones, in Apocalypse Now, the protagonist on the hunt for Colonel Kurtz is played by Martin Sheen, and in 40k, Conrad Kurz is eventually killed by an Imperial Calidus assassin called Mshen. 
Okay, number nine, Sanguinius of the Blood Angels is another pretty easy one, but it's quite interesting. Sanguis is just Latin for blood. So he's blood guy, leader of the blood guys. But also, Sanguine is one of the four temperaments in the old medieval medical system known as humorism. Back then, a lot of doctors thought that diseases or various moods were caused by an excess of certain fluids in the body. There were four. Too much yellow bile and you'd be choleric, that's short-tempered. Too much black bile and you'd be melancholic or lazy and sickly. Too much phlegm and you'd be phlegmatic, low-spirited. And too much blood and you'd be sanguine, optimistic, especially in hopeless situations, which I guess is a pretty good description of Sanguinius for the entire heresy story. And if you thought that was a simple one, here comes Ferris Manus of the Iron Hands, which is of course just Iron Hand in Latin. And he has Iron Hands, so he's Iron Hand with his Iron Hands leading the Iron Hands. He's also called the Gorgon, which is meant to be because he's grim of aspect and kind of ugly, but of course that's a reference to the homeworld of the Iron Hands, Medusa. The Gorgons are the snake-headed ladies of Greek myth, one of which was named Medusa, and of course looking at them would turn you to stone, which wasn't pleasant either. We're in the really easy middle bit of the Primarchs here. The 12th Primarch is Angron, who is angry and leads the World Eaters, who are also angry. I mean, I, I really think that's it. There's nothing else there. The 13th Primarch, Rubut Giaman, is an interesting one. There's loads you could go into here. The name actually features the syllables Ro and Man, and, you know, the Ultramarines are Roman. Guile means cunning in English and in Old French, so I guess he's like a cunning Roman man. But apparently it's none of that. It's just taken from a random name found in a French newspaper while the writer was on holiday, according to the internet anyway. And to continue the theme, Mortarion of the Death Guard is another easy one. Mors means death in Latin and is the root of loads of similar words, from the French mort to the English mortal to about half the proper nouns in 40k. So the Death Guard are just led by Death Arian. Now, Magnus the Red of the Thousand Sons is a strange one. Magnus means great or big in Latin. Magnus the Red is certainly big. He's meant to be a giant. But the main thing about him is that he's an extremely powerful sorcerer from planet Egypt. So I think this is mostly someone just writing a name in the book before the story had really been fleshed out. At the time his name first appeared in 40k, not much had been written about the Thousand Sons other than that back then they wore red, something that would eventually become their heresy colours. Interestingly, Planet Egypt in 40k is called Prospero, which is the name of the magician in Shakespeare's The Tempest, so there is a reference in there, it's just not one that features the Primarch. Also, while we're on the subject, Prospero's servant in The Tempest was a creature called Caliban, a sort of mutated, twisted, angry guy, and of course the Dark Angel's homeworld is called Caliban too, which is full of mutated and twisted monsters. Number 16, Horus Lupercal is next. Horus was, of course, an ancient Egyptian god. In the mythology, Horus was the son of head gods Osiris and Isis, but when Osiris is killed by his brother Set, Horus is hidden away and grows up in secret, eventually returning to battle set for his rightful crown. It's a story familiar from lots of mythologies. Horus is particularly associated with inheritance and kingship, and you know, getting his rightful place as the successor of his father, which is pretty apt already. Lupercal is Roman though. The mythological founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, were said to be nursed by a she-wolf as babies. In Latin, lupus means wolf, the Lupercal is the cave in which that happened, and the Romans actually had a fertility festival called Lupercalia in honour of all that. So Horus Lupercal is a mix of one of the two founders of an empire and a god famous for inheriting his rightful place as ruler. Primarch 17 is Lorgar of the Word Bearers. As far as I can tell, Lorgar isn't really a direct reference to anything. The closest we can get is that it kind of sounds like the word Logos, which means law or deductive reasoning. He also has a couple of other names. One is Aurelian, because he's seen as a golden being with golden skin. But the other is the Eurizen, which is a reference to the 18th century poet William Blake, who constructed a whole mythology around his poetry. In that mythology, Eurizen was a creator figure, a sort of deity that represented conventional reason and law. And like Lorgar, much of William Blake's poetry had a lot of religious themes. The joke here is of course that while Eurizen and Logos are both references to deductive reasoning, Lorgar in Warhammer is the representative of blind faith in the divine. Starting from the premise that gods definitely do exist and then casting around trying to find one to worship. 
Okay, Vulcan of the Salamanders is a relatively easy one with a lot connected to it. The Salamanders in 40k are hardy artisans with an affinity for fire and flame. In fact, that's why they're called Salamanders. In various mythologies, the Salamander was said to be either immune to fire or could create fire. In Roman mythology, Vulcan was the god of fire, the forge and metalworking, whose symbol was a blacksmith's hammer just like Vulcan in 40k. Also in 40k, the salamanders are based on the moon Prometheus, which orbits the planet of Nocturne, where Vulcan grew up in the city of Hesiod. In Greek mythology, Prometheus was the titan who stole fire from the gods, and the first reference we have to that story in ancient writings is from the Roman poet Hesiod. In the myth, Prometheus is punished by the gods by being bound in chains and tortured. An eagle eats his liver every day, but he's immortal, so the liver regrows each night and then the torture goes on forever. And that story is very similar to what happens with Vulcan himself during the Horus Heresy. Chained up by the Night Haunter, tortured every day, but unable to die because he's immortal. Right, I think the last two here are just a case of the writers needing to come up with some names really fast because they are Ferris Manus levels of silly. Corvus Corax is the Primarch of the Raven Guard. Corvus Corax is the scientific name for the common raven, and Alpharius is the Primarch of the Alpha Legion. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, so calling the very last legion number one is sort of a joke, but the Black Library authors have run with this over the years. There's an in-world rumour that he was actually the first to be found, and his twin brother is called Omegon, which is the last letter of the Greek alphabet, but all of that is written after the fact. I would guess the reason he's called Alpharius is because someone had a deadline to hit? Anyway, there we go. 20 Primarchs named after a bunch of stuff. Sometimes careful allusions to literary history that show you just how deep the references in 40k go, and sometimes not. And to be honest, the whole of 40k is a bit like this. Part of the fun is 40k is all those historical, literary, and mythological references all mixed up together in one big pot. So there's a few more videos I could do like this. Let me know if that's something you want to see. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like more videos about the history and lore of 40k, there should be another one coming up just there to the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are affiliate links for all your hobby shop needs and links to my Patreon in the thing below. See ya.